bakasuki.org light novel fan translation community. This is a translated and collaborated script. Works belong to their respective copyright holders in their respective countries. Did they die? From the back of the car came an old man's voice. No, although we were driving very quickly. Ah, they moved. Maybe they fell because they lost their balance. The answer from the driver's seat was from a young woman's voice. Then let's hurry! Yes. As if nothing had happened, the car picked up speed as it pulled out of the scene. Only when the car was about to drive onto the main street did that man in the back finally speak again. Be careful! Why did you hit someone? My apologies. I originally intended to avoid them, but they suddenly danced out into the center of the road. Breaking then was already too late. The man in the back was silent for a while. He was thinking the woman on the driver's seat had yet to lie to him until now. Danced out? Yes, the man was wearing a black suit and the woman black formal dress, almost like they were dancers rehearsing something. This place is rather far from Broadway. And the man was still holding a hat in his right hand, a Japanese samurai helmet. The man raised an eyebrow at that. In recent times, the youngsters have been really hard to understand. There was no response from the driver's seat. Huh. Even long ago, I couldn't understand the thoughts of those youngsters. The man slowly closed his eyes as he talked to himself. That's right. From two hundred years ago, it started when that youngster lost his senses. I will never believe in young people again. When compared to you, Master Quates, the whole world is younger. The sound came from the driver's seat. Although he was interrupted, Ziller didn't seem displeased and answered, Of course. That's why I don't trust anyone. After this, a deep silence descended on the car. This large black car, driven by a woman, stopped at the southern building of the central bus station. The Empire State Building, which was expected to be finished next year, could be seen from their location. Although it wasn't complete, it already exuded a stately sense of prestige as it overlooked the entire street. The female driver hurried to get off the car first, then opened the back seat door. The back of the car was very spacious, a rare model at the time. Zillard Quates was in a bad mood as he descended from the car, deepening the folds on his already heavily creased face. The rays from late autumn sun filtered through between the buildings and shone directly onto the old man's face. Blinding! The female driver immediately opened an umbrella. Across the whole five meters between the car and the entrance of the building, she shaded the old man from the sun as she moved with him. When they arrived at the door, the driver used her free hand to insert the key into the lock of the door. Zillard hadn't even looked at her from when the driver opened the door until now. There was nothing inside the building, just the bare layout of the rooms. There wasn't a shred of life in the building. However, it wasn't abandoned either. There was no soot on the floor. The walls and lights were very new, as though renovations had only been completed yesterday. Zillard walked to the empty space by the side of the stairs, and tapped his foot a few times on the floor. After some seconds, the light above the stairs lit up. Zillard tapped his foot again to confirm. The floorboard in front of him lifted up and from within emerged an old man's head. Well, well, if it isn't Master Quates, it's been a while since we last met. It's only been twenty years. That's not really a long time. Heh, <laughs> heh, 
Your perspective of time is different from ours. Time is always the same. It just differs in how it is perceived. That's all. With this greeting, the two old men and the young woman walked down the stairs. Zillard and this old man's footsteps were so light, it was difficult to believe they were both elderly people. Then, a group of people appeared in front of them. Ooh, Master Quaint! It's great to see you in such good health! You look well! Your existence is truly an amazing miracle to mankind! The dozen or so men didn't seem at all surprised by the fact that Quaits's appearance hadn't changed in the past twenty years. The men's ages varied, but the youngest looked like they were already forty years old. In fact, there were even three men who looked like they were around ninety. Zillard, surrounded by a group of old men, looked around, then said lazily, Looks like Barnes and Stegen aren't around. The old men looked down. The man who guided Zillard reported sorrowfully. Master Barnes is currently in the distillation room. Master Stegen passed away last year. I see. Zillard's voice didn't have any emotion. It can't be helped. Dying of old age. If he had persisted for another year, then he would have been able to celebrate this day with us. Zillard asserted. The others didn't object. They knew it was near impossible for themselves to die from accidents or illnesses. In the past, without the complete wine, I wasn't able to grant you immortal life. Although you won't die a sudden death, you can't help but fear aging to death. But that will end today. There were some small cheers, which echoed around the underground room. But there appear to be some problems. In an instant, the cheering died down to give way to solemn silence. Is it true the brewer is dead? After Zillard's words, the caretaker reported speedily. Uh, yes, yesterday a robber stabbed him to death. Who was the criminal? At this point, a forty-year-old man stepped forward to continue the report by the caretaker. Master Zillard, the criminal has already been captured in a trap by the police, and was arrested not long ago. I heard he pretended to be a beggar to carry out his robberies. He doesn't seem to belong to any one organization, but was just a vagrant drug addict. A coincidence, huh? If that's true, then we don't even know his name. We should have originally included that brewer into our group. Even though it's just a half-complete product, if he had drunk it, then he wouldn't have died when he encountered that robber. As though realizing something, Zillard tisked. It is as you say, Master Zillard. That person is just a boring man who only knows recipes and alchemy. Letting him into your group is a bit... The old caretaker ventured nervously. Really? Perhaps that's the case. You old folks haven't changed at all. While in Zillard's heart, he ridiculed the surrounding people. His mouth just went along and agreed. Another brewer can always be found. The question is the complete product. Can Barnes guarantee he completed the thing I want? Yes, with a leftover of three dozen bottles. Is he all right on his own? This replaces a granary in public records. No one other than rats will enter, so there's no need for you to worry. And all non-members will be followed by bodyguards, because if they learn about the wine, they'll be great trouble. You need only go yourselves. In any way, you dislike shouldering the important responsibilities. Although he continued his silent criticism with loathing, Zillard nodded his head anyway, and requested the female driver behind him. Ennis, go and pick up the wine and barns with your car. Yes. The female driver named Ennis bowed respectfully to Zillard and the other men. With only the car keys in her hand, she started climbing the stairs. From behind came another order from Zillard. 
Oh, and if Barnes dares to touch a single drop of my wine, don't hesitate. Kill him. On the other hand, if he dares to waste my wine, likewise, kill him. Understood. Cold sweat started pouring down the old men's backs. The people within this room would never die from injuries or sickness, even if they fell into searing magma. As long as they didn't die of old age, they could still regenerate. But there were also exceptions, when they could be easily killed. Those capable of this feat were the two people before them. But, in contrast, they could never kill these two people. This was a terror from which there was no escape. The fear of aging would be overcome with the complete product coming today but then the terror before their eyes would never end. If they didn't want to see the stroke of death's scythe, they had to pledge loyalty to the old man before their eyes. Life without end. In other words, eternity. As long as they did not die, they couldn't escape from the fear of death. This was a contradictory, vicious cycle. 